Hello, welcome to Reto for You. Today we're working on the 1541 Commodore Drive, which is donated by 8 Bit Reto Refix. And Steve's a good guy. He fetched this to me to the Amiga show and said, I've got you a present. It doesn't work, but we said, that's great. We can hopefully diagnose this. So we're going to try to get this working today, or at least find out what's wrong with it and causing the issue. Also, hopefully, to diagnose it, we're using this hand deck scope which again was donated to me by Captain Commodore. Another great YouTuber, thanks again mate. I'm still not 100% on how to use this, but hopefully I'll log on one day and have some more lessons off you. But I'm learning and hopefully this video I'll work it out and get some readings. So we're gonna strip this down today. We're gonna to have a look inside. We're gonna do some probing with the hand tech as telescope and see if we can actually get some readings off the 6502 CPU. I've been looking into the 650 CPU to see which pins do what, the, obviously the reset lines, the uh, clock speeds, etc. So we know it runs at one megahertz, so we should be able to get a reading one megahertz on the oscilloscope if it's running. I've also been looking into these drives to try and learn a bit more about them because I've never actually owned one because they were like mega expensive in my day too expensive i think the us had more of these and we did in the uk we tend to more have tape drives in the uk but i'm really glad i've got one and it'll be really well looked after once it's running and hopefully after this short intro we'll get this apart and see what it's like inside again if you're here again from my other videos thanks again for watching and thanks for your support we're over i think approaching 300 and 40 subs now so hopefully we'll hit the 350 subs soon anyway thanks again so i shall see you after the short intro with more commodore loveliness see you again soon guys bye Okay, so welcome for Retro for you. Today, as promised, I said we're going to work on this Commodore 1541 drive, which was donated to me from 8 Bit Retro Refix. Thanks a lot for that, mate. I've been after one of these for a while. So, apparently, a lot of things you can tell from these are from the lights. I'm totally new to repairing these, I've never repaired these. I think with this, we're going to be using the oscilloscope, which we haven't used before basically so it's all new to me and hopefully you're going to enjoy this learning experience as well so first thing i'm going to do i've got the power lead in we're going to power it on now apparently this should power on and the red light green light should come on obviously for power then the red light should come on when it's like doing like a post test and then go straight out so as you can see both lights are on and the disk drive is making a spinning noise. It's constantly spinning. So at least we know there's power there. I mean, that's one thing. So we're gonna switch this off and have a look inside it. Should only be four screws down below. As you can see here, we're inside this. This is known as a short board. I think due to the size of the board, I guess there's a, a longer board. Now, I'm just checking over. I can't see any issues at all. The board looks very clean. And we can reseat these socketed chips here. There's a 6502 there, which I guess is a processor. This is basically another computer in itself to run the drivers it's a this is why they were so expensive because they basically put another computer inside the drive it's the way commodore did things so i'm going to get these connections off here and we're going to have a look at the board So 
So there's a board removed. There is some jumper wires across here, but this looks like it may be done in the factory by the looks of it. It's done very neatly. Other than that, I can't actually see anything wrong with that, so not that it jumps out at me. Right, whilst we're in here now, you can see there, these are single sided disk drives. So you just have one head this side here. So you can see this head here. So what we're gonna do, we'll just get a bit of IPA in the cotton wool bud and give that a clean while we're in here. itself is very clean inside it's just a few bits of dust so we'll move this out of the way in a minute so basically let's just so we'll have a look at the board again I think we'll have to reconnect this back in. Obviously we've looked at the bottom, there's nothing really that stands out anywhere. And we can just re-pull these chips, these socket chips. There's one, two, three of them here. A couple of six, five, two, twos. Also as well, which is good. Side camera, okay. As you can see here, most of these chips here, they've got like this number, 83, 83. 83 and okay it's another 83 and that also there 1983 so that means all these chips here are all 1983 which is probably original on this board which means they've not been swapped out which is a good thing because sometimes you find that these will have like a, an 86 maybe an 84 and that's where people have been swapping stuff out to try and like swap things around also it's copyright 1982 at the top so that all looks good so we're just gonna pull these chips anyway and give the sockets a clean out just in case. You never know, it could be something as simple as that. I'll try the simple things first before busting out the oscilloscope. So just bear with me, listen to some music while I swap these chips out. Just give everything a good dust off. These are basically, do you know the uh, car detailing brushes? We'll find them really good for dusting off main boards. So we'll get this back together and we will see what's happening.
So this is now when I need to go and read up on some things as well. I'm about to test this 6502. There's certain legs that we need to clip onto. Let's try and get readings off the oscilloscope. So bear with me and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back on the scope. It seems like I've actually got the one megahertz signal now. If you look down there, it's actually switching to one megahertz. I mean, obviously, it's not one of the top of range scopes, but it seems to be reading a one megahertz scope. A one megahertz signal now on pin three, which is correct. So it's like the CPU is running. So that looks to me, that's right. What do you think, Captain Commodore? That looks good, yeah? One megahertz signal. So it wasn't pin 36, so it, it's pin 39, which should be number one megahertz signal, which it is. And pin 37 as well as where the clock comes in, so I think that's that one, which again it is. So you can see there that the clock is actually working on the CPU. So it looks like it is doing something. Let's investigate this more. So, also, we have the reset signal, which is pin 40, which should stay low and then stay high when I switch on. If this apparently doesn't go to high, then the CPU just stays in a dormant state, basically. So, and that didn't do anything with me. Well, we've still got a clock there. Oh, it did. It did, yeah. You can see it, it does jump to high watch. So it's low. And then it went high. So it's down low. And then it went high. I don't want it's supposed to stay at high. I read up a bit more on pin 34. We should be seven pin down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Should be the read right. And that should be pulsing. And as you can say, it's just sitting still. It's not doing anything. Also, I think pin 40 we said was going high. Isn't moving as well. So to me, no, it's just staying as it is. That should shoot to high as it turns on. Oh, it sort of randomly does, doesn't it? But most of the time it's just sitting low. But obviously we've got the clock there. We've got the clock here. So the clock's running, but it looks like the CPU isn't running any instructions. One, two, three, four, five, six. So to me, that should be pulsing now because this is the read right of the CPU. So it should be sending data up and down. As you can see, it's doing nothing. So to me, this CPU is dead. So I need to go and source myself a 6502. So next video, we'll get a replacement 6502. We'll stick it in a drive and see what difference we get. And if it does work, then obviously we'll probe these same connections so you can see the difference. So again it's a learning curve with this oscilloscope i'm glad i've actually got it working now so we can read the one megahertz signal which is great because we actually see the cpu is running the clock speed which is good it's just not doing anything else it seems that everything else on there is dead so thanks again for watching if you're new here then please like and subscribe your like and subscribe button should be coming up in a bit and Thanks for watching and I shall see you next week, hopefully with replacement 6502 for this. Thanks again guys, see ya, bye.